Hey y'all, Mike here, Spike Dare Studio. And as an airbrush artist, I like to expand into different uh, art forms, that type of thing. So aside from drawing, airbrushing, I've recently taken up uh, painting watercolors. And uh, I've watched quite a few videos uh, from the Mind of Watercolor series. I uh, highly recommend it. Great uh, videos, easy to listen to, uh, great demonstrations. But in addition to that, I wanted something on my bookshelf in my art studio to help me along. And I found this book at uh, Barnes & Noble. It's called Light Up Your Watercolors Layer by Layer uh, by Linda Stevens Moyer. It's uh, $26.99 and worth every penny. I'm very pleased with the book. And uh, for somebody like me, there's uh, I've never done watercolor before so this is a great book that takes you from absolute bare bones basics um, to uh, more advanced projects so it's a little forward about the author uh, I've written her actually and she answered back which was pretty cool uh, very nice lady very encouraging words so definitely uh, check out some of her work too but um, it covers, it's got an introduction, goes over the materials, uh, three main techniques of watercolor, uh, some simple color theory, and creating convincing form and space, building textures, uh, perceiving color and light, uh, pointers before you paint, and layering with color. And uh, there's a number of useful tips and techniques in here that uh, can transcend to any art form really, especially uh, color layering with uh, the common ground between watercolor and airbrushing is uh, a lot more common than I thought it would be so um, it allowed me to pick it up a lot faster but um, moving on here uh, chapter one it starts off just getting smartest materials um, paint palettes uh, types of brushes for uh, watercolor brush care and tips uh, quality of paper is huge with watercolor. Uh, I didn't know there was that big of a difference, but there is. Um, other supplies like a wood board, uh, easels, sketchbooks, pencils, water containers. All of it's step-by-step. Uh, -step, uh, very good demonstration on how to stretch paper properly and keep it stretched um, to avoid warping while painting. And then it gets into the uh, three main techniques chapter two and it's got some exercises to follow along just learning to control your brush um, learning to control the wash the amount of pigment and paint um, that you put down it goes over the economy of the brush stroke and the value of the color when you're painting layering it up uh, the wash how to get a nice even wash use of masking fluids um, again another technique that can be used with airbrushing or uh, if you're a hobbyist this is you know good stuff that can be used for masking off difficult areas um, wet into wet techniques and then it gives assignments along the way too and it tells you uh, or she gives instructions what to do um, like in this study using three color values to create a single portrait and um, it's really good information. I mean, it seems rudimentary and basic, but it really focuses on teaching you the techniques and the uh, um, things you've learned to this point and putting them to use to actually create a portrait. Things, same here. Um, step five, it gives you the materials. Um, and colors to create this portrait it takes you step by step all along the way and then it gets into some simple color theory um, which is anybody should have artist hobbyist um, if you're into any use of color you need it and then it gets into some more uh, properties of color and uh, mixing colors creating uh, alternative uh, color wheels uh, 
and here again it's you know a study in light and shadow to reveal form uh, another crossover here with uh, airbrushing techniques and starting off assignment 13 uh, using a still life to uh, create a photo or composition it gets into a study of uh, perspectives building textures um, using different types of uh, like tape printing um, wet into wet techniques um, spattering water lifting paint um, which you know creating highlight on a watercolor it's a technique um, that you need to have in the toolbox and using you know cutting the shapes lifting it with a wet brush uh, dry lifting putting salt into the paint you know another airbrush uh, technique for effects sandpaper texture techniques put into practice still another project step by step using plastic wrap here again another airbrush transition uh, between to create effects and then uh, color and light studies to create shapes and distance contrast you know looking at the same colors with white and dark backgrounds and you know again as the book progresses there's assignments um, for each part of the book to use what's been studied thus far getting set up using your camera transferring the image and getting into um, layering with colors and uh, the information in this chapter can be used uh, with airbrushing uh, if you're a figure painter there's a lot of good um, color theory and color knowledge here just starting off with the light and raising your values and intensifying the various colors um, through progressive layers so this artistic information here can be transcended to uh, you know airbrush watercolor um, color pencil drawing figure painting you name it it's all good information and it can be used for all different types of uh, art forms now you get to the end there's a like a study in water and some uh, it's like daisies If you're an airbrush artist, you're uh, somebody who's looking to get into watercolor or just try something new, I highly recommend adding this book to your uh, library. Uh, very easy to follow, very informative, um, very step-by-step uh, -step and user-friendly. So do check it out. Light up your watercolors layer by layer by Linda Stevens Moyer. So that's it for today's show and tell. Until next time, keep painting.